So once you've gone through your data and you made sure that it's good and checked it all and rechecked it and you're confident that that is good data, every marker is labeled exactly correctly, you are ready to get it out of your software. For example, this trial we went through and checked to make sure that every one of these markers is labeled correctly. And we checked and rechecked. This is a good trial. How do we get our data out? In this case, we're going to export to C3D. C3D is the industry standard for the biomechanical data coming out of a motion capture system. And it's not limited just to the kinematics. Obviously, in this case, all we have is kinematics because we don't have force plates in our studio. But force plate data can be in here as well, as can other types of analog data, including EMG. So the most common type of data that you're going to see in a C3D file includes uh, kinematics, forces, and EMG. Of course, it's not limited to that, and your lab might employ a few extra types of data. But the important thing is to understand how to export it from your system. Now notice I'm excluding unidentified trajectories because I know that those trajectories are not what we are interested in. We're going to exclude empty trajectories and we're going to use de facto standard full labels. Now, typically C3D, the official rules of C3D files, is to be short, which is why actually you see all the names on here are very short. But by default, we have them on as the full labels, and C3D will read either or. But be careful if you're using a different type of software. So I'm going to click OK and just going to output gate LB2 as a C3D file. I should highlight one other thing, although not a requirement. I have trimmed this trial to be just the area of interest of the trial that we want to record. See, if I widen this, you see our subject here walks out of that area of interest, we start losing markers, kind of outside our volume, but it's not actually going to be a problem if that data is in the file, as we'll simply not be able to track it in Visual 3D. Since we're really only going to analyze that area in the middle where we have full tracking and several strides, that is the only area that we wanted to export. So as you go through and export, make sure you export enough trials from the collection you got to make sure you have a full heel strike to heel strike on each side several times so you can get good statistics out of it. Ideally, you should be aiming to record five or more trials and then exporting at least three. Of course, the more you export since the processing can be automated, as we talk about in Visual 3D Basics and Visual 3D Export Builder, you could have any number and it won't cost you any extra time, except it will cost you time in going over the data to make sure it's good enough to export. That being said, it's up to you and your team to decide how many is the right number of trials that you should be exporting. So that wraps up our introduction to this course where we did a practical unit talking about motion capture and how to place the markers and how to get the data out. And in the next units, we're going to start talking about the principles of biomechanics, starting from a history. And we're also going to talk about this data and how to apply those principles of biomechanics to a very practical use. And we're going to use this data and other data to illustrate basic principles of biomechanics.